All right, I'm heading over to Cafe Buell, located in the Diamond Jamboree Shopping Center here in Irvine, California. What I'm expecting is to see some kind of a Bitcoin ATM. I heard some uh, information that said that the guy who owns that place has some real uh, particular concerns about currency. So we're going to go see if we can find him and maybe use the Bitcoin ATM and see what's going on over there. All right, hang with me. Here we go. All right, we're here. Let's go check it out and see what's going on. Okay, the coffee shop is a nice place. Brand new, decorated very stylishly. No evidence that anything special is going on until you look in the back. And there you'll see a Bitcoin ATM. Now this Bitcoin ATM is made by a company not associated with the uh, coffee shop, but there it is. One Bitcoin, $260 USD. I went ahead and hit the English button and then start to see what I had to do. First thing I did was I entered in my phone number. And the system sent me a text message with the verification code. Not quite sure why it needed that, but I went ahead and entered it in. waited for the system to give me options, and I decided that I would buy some Bitcoin. I do have a Bitcoin wallet associated with the company Coinbase that maintains Bitcoin for you. The ATM then turned on a camera and waited for me to scan my QR code associated with my Coinbase account couldn't film that because I needed my phone to show the address as a QR code. As soon as I did, it suggested that I should enter cash into the, dis into the scanner, into the little cash receiving window down below. So I pulled out a $20 bill with one hand, gave it a shot. Curiously, the transaction limit for this machine was in fact $20. So this isn't going to be a place where you're making fortunes. You also notice that the machine is not particularly fast. So if there was any kind of a line at this machine, people would have gotten frustrated pretty quickly. Where do I insert the cash? I was convinced I was doing something wrong. And in fact, I was. I was putting it, the $20 bill in the receipts machine, rather in the receipt slot, rather than in the money slot. Slurp, there it goes. In a second, the machine registered that I had $20, translated that to Bitcoin, and then after I hit I'm done, set Bitcoin from presumably this company's wallet to my wallet. Now the rate that it gave me was a little bit less than what the open market rate was and that's how the company makes money. They take a fee on top of the exchange rate. It can take as much as an hour to get confirmation that your Bitcoin had been sent cleanly from one address to another address. Bitcoin machine seems to have done it a little bit quicker. I went ahead and printed a receipt. Took a few seconds. And out it came. Voila! My very first Bitcoin ATM transaction. I was able to have a conversation with the owner of Buell Coffee to find and find out what it was about Bitcoin that attracted his attention and what he found interesting about it. His name's Jai Ho and he's a very nice guy and um, he didn't want to be filmed on camera but he allowed me to record 
the conversation and take some notes so I could let you know what does a real businessman uh, find interesting about Bitcoin. It's just the only time I've seen it physical, you know, seen physical versions of Bitcoin, it's been a failure every time I've tried to use it. Like I, there's a, some vendors at the OC Fairground that, you know, say that they'll take Bitcoin, but when I go to sit down with them and try and actually pay in Bitcoin, their technology gets all screwed up and they can't find the code and it just fails. So like the fact that I just bought Bitcoin there is sort of fascinating to me because that's the first time I've ever seen it work physically, you know. So there's two things that you can do here uh, with Bitcoin. The first is we have a point of sale system that is wired for Bitcoin. Okay. So we do Bitcoin transactions all the time. You do? Using Bitcoin wallets. Uh -huh. so that has nothing to do with this Bitcoin so-called kiosk or right. ATM. Uh, the ATM, it's basically a link between Bitcoin and physical local currency, in yep. this case US dollars. Yep. So you can buy and sell Bitcoin with U.S. dollars. Yeah. Anyway, um, why I got it? Yeah, is, so, yeah, that's what I'm interested. Yeah, me personally, I got it because I think it's interesting technology, just inherently interesting, and I think that Bitcoin needs to get some traction. Um, and the way that it's going to get traction is by visibility and acceptance, and just it's being used more. It's kind of a catch-22. I mean, if no one accepts it, then people aren't going to be interested in it, and so on. So um, I just have some interest in it on that level. Uh, as a merchant, uh, I want to put it in here because I think it'll generate traffic. I think it'll generate well, potentially, it did. yeah, and and potentially some interest. Uh -huh. Know, and um, uh, interest of the positive kind. I'd like to think that we're not a chain, we're an independently owned coffee shop. I'd like to think that we're a little bit more progressive and outside the box. Um, as a merchant and as a citizen, one of the things that bugs me, and I wish people would talk about it more, is that somehow the U.S. Treasury and the Fed, they fell asleep at the wheel because all of a sudden private credit card companies have become almost the effect of a tax on commerce. Oh, okay. So and this is something you feel as a merchant. As a merchant and yeah. as, a, as, you know, as a merchant. And to, um, they, they try to sort of, they... They muddy the waters by all of these point programs and becoming the, the, the befriending the consumer. But the economics is, is that the merchant has to pay. Mm -hmm. And de facto, a merchant, you know, in practical sense, you can't not take credit cards. Right. And it's someone, the agencies and the people who are supposed to be guaranteeing our governmental money supply for the use of its citizenry has fallen asleep at the wheel. Maybe not fallen asleep, maybe it's the result of intense lobbying efforts. But here, as a coffee shop, with my transaction volume and my average amount per transaction, typical credit card company, I have to pay six or seven points. And that's basically... Six or seven percent? Percentages. Sixty or seventy basis points. That's crazy. Right? And now, if I'm selling TVs with, that cost a couple hundred, two, three hundred, four hundred dollars, then the one-time per transaction fees and um, taxes and surcharges and so on that are per transaction, they don't. It's possible for me to ignore those. But as a coffee shop, if I go with a very reputable processor, one of the large ones, Mercury. Um, it was close to 7%. Well, so that was my field trip to Buell Coffee, located in the Diamond Jamboree Shopping Center on Alton Parkway in Irvine, California. Give them a visit if you're interested in checking out their coffee or if you want to try their Bitcoin vending machine. See if it works for you. Maybe the future. Certainly interesting and fun to talk to the owner about his motivations and the future of money.